Jeremy Cook here, and some time ago I made a solder squid with a concrete base. I made a 3D printed mold for this, but really you can make it out of anything. A bucket, old cup, whatever you want. The great thing about it is that it's non-conductive and heavy, so it holds your stuff really tightly without making it, well, without making it conductive. So, yeah, it's all good for that. Also put a fan on it to keep the air out of your face, or the, the fumes out of your face, I should say. Well, the only thing is you have to have it on. At some point in the future, maybe I'll put some sort of timer, watchdog timer, to turn it off after a certain amount of time. That's what I said back then, and now is that time. I actually put a PIR sensor here on it. It's got a, a power supply on that. This, this board's really cool because you can it actually charges lipos and has a boost converter on it so you can get the right voltage that you need. So my thing, it's got a, a switch. It's got a little transistor board that provides power to a fan. Might be a way to do it without a fan, without a transistor. I'll show that a little bit later, but looks good. And yeah, there's the final result. So I soldered on a Molex connector to easily connect the battery. Looking good. And this is board, you see it can, it can put out up to 27 volts DC and charge a LiPo. So you can either run it on battery power or when plugged in. Added a little bit of hot glue to keep it keep it secure, keep it from falling off. And then, then it was a matter of adjusting the voltage to make sure everything was correct. Here you can see I'm adjusting the trim pot using an external multimeter. So I'm just kind of kind of adjusting until I get the voltage that I wanted. I, th I think the fan was 12 volts DC, but these fans can usually run around five volts based on my experience. So I've got that hooked up the, the power wire as, as, as well as the PWM wire, which is the orange wire here. Added some sh heat shrink as well as a transistor board that I call the Easy Fan. It's possible that I could just use the PWM input on the fan to turn this on without the transistor board, but I'll go over that a little bit later. Modified this case for this enclosure. Had this left over from something else, probably bought it on a whim but it's nice to have around. Probably could 3D print something for it too, but this whole thing as far as hooking the electronics up on it was kind of kind of a matter of just seeing where everything was, would fit and trying to fit it in correctly. The side there I, I milled for the, for the USB connector. So it looks nice, looking good. Little hot glue on the PIR sensor. Plug that in, held nicely. Not worrying about the, the shield there because it's not like it's got to see a wide swath. It just needs to see the, the hands in front of it to turn on. There's a power adapter. Actually made an error here. Yeah, should have should have actually switched on the output line, but yeah, hindsight's 2020, I guess. It works when it's it's just on battery power, but when it's trying to charge, it gives some really weird behavior. Yeah, so you can see there it works, you know, once unplugged, but obviously you want it to be able to charge as well. So added this, uh, took it apart, a nice battery, and this is kind of what I came up with. You've got the USB input, the battery input all the time, and then you've got the switch, switching off the PIR sensor, as well as the transistor board and, and everything. So that's that makes a lot more sense. The other idea that I've kind of illustrated here is that you could potentially use the PW input to the fan to turn it on and off. I didn't do that here, but I did experiment with it based on a Raspberry Pi in another video, so I'll put a link to that when it's up. After that was all settled, got to screw it all in again. It looks looks pretty good. A few zip ties, a few mirror holes on the case to keep it keep it in place. Yeah, and turns on during the day or or at night so it you know the PIR sensor doesn't doesn't care so looking looking good and it's got the switch you can just turn it off permanently if you want to make sure it's off especially on battery power that could be beneficial so this solved a problem for me that I had you know you you start soldering something and maybe you don't have it on or off or you don't have to have battery power as as I had earlier, I just had it hooked up with a non-rechargeable battery. So this is great. You can you can use it plugged in if you need it plugged in, or you can you can take it somewhere else just under battery power. Incidentally, I'm soldering up something else that solves a few problems for me. I, ca I call it the Ground Juino Nano. I, I'm hoping uh, you'll see this in a lot more upcoming videos that I that I do. It adds screw terminals potentially, or 
and, and or a capacitor and several other things to it to an Arduino Nano and five extra ground pins, five extra five volt power pins and four potentially four extra 3.3 volt power pins. So yeah, this, uh, this thing's just helping me solder that up, keep the fumes out of my face. And yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with how both these things work. So thanks so much for watching this video. If, if you enjoyed it, you know, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, etc., etc., Or poke around on my channel if you want. I make, I make all kinds of stuff, not just electronics. You probably find something you like, probably some stuff you don't like. So anyway, thanks for watching. This is Jeremy Cook, signing off.